Hello viewers, welcome to my video on fixing faults with the Whirlpool ADG7650 dishwasher. It won't be the most professional video, but it's just a few pointers on common places to look for common faults. Um, before we go ahead, I'd just like to say I'd strongly recommend you call out us trained and competent technicians to do this sort of stuff. Um, if you decide to do this yourself, it's at your own risk. Uh, and it, the machine should definitely be isolated before you do any work on it. Um, but basically, it's taken me a few hours to get to this stage. So the, wash, the dishwasher's uh, in its current state. It originally had a, a fascia panel attached to the front. Um, and this is just to save you a bit of time by pointing out where some key components are. So if I show you first, to remove the fascia panel, there are six screws on the inside. You'll see there's actually five down each side of the interior door. Um, it's the middle three on each side, which are the longer of the three screws. If you take each of those out, the door should loosen, and then you can slide it downwards, because those uh, three screws on each side just go into these brackets like this. Um, the exact problem I've had with my dishwasher is it was refusing to drain. So I started by just stripping it down. Quite an easy job, really. Um, there's uh, this sort of mesh filter. It goes over this hole. It just pops out with your fingers. But before you do that, you have to remove this filter, which sits inside there, and just twists out. Um, and also, to make it a bit more easier to access and get my head around things, I've removed the central spinner, which just twists and pulls off and the top drawer, which are just some little clips which just pull off on either end of these sliders. Um, I've done a bit of troubleshooting to find out why it wasn't draining. First I've drained all the water myself by scooping it out with buckets and bowls and sponges and stuff. Um, I've looked down inside and seen that the main drain area, which is this hole here, appeared clear. So the next step I took was to remove the outer door and then remove this bottom panel here. Um, you need a special Torx head screwdriver to remove this, and it's these four screws here. One, two, three, four. This panel then comes off, which I won't show you now, but there is a pump on the inside, which comes off by just removing the clip on the end of the pump, and then twisting the pump away from you and pulling off. And then you can inspect the pump and see if there's any blockage in the pipe there. Before you do any of this sort of thing though, I'd strongly recommend that you isolate it at the main electrical circuit breaker board. As you can see in this case, uh, whenever I'm doing any electrical work, just to be safe, I switch pretty much everything on the whole floor off. And then I test those sockets to make sure they're off. Um, but if you're feeling a bit lazy or want to take a few risks, you can potentially just switch it off, but make sure it's switched off at the wall. Um, that hasn't fixed the problem, so I've then removed the top two screws on the inside of the door um, and removed this electrical panel at the top. Um, and I've tested all these co connections just physically to see if there's any loose connections there. Um, the reason I did this is because I realised that the light to activate the dishwasher cycles was no longer coming on. So there must be something electrical there. That still didn't solve the problem after I restarted again. So then um, I noticed that below the door there's a ribbon of electrical wires. I noticed in my case the protective plastic shielding around these wires has snapped, has worn through with age. And one of the wires, in fact, has actually been cut through. It's quite a dangerous fault because then the current can then pass to the metal surround of the dishwasher and make it live. So, so just that jumping ahead a little to save time, um, I've uh, now removed the outer door, the outer metal door of the dishwasher completely. Now to do that, you just remove the last two of the, uh, the 10 screws around the side of the door. Then the metal face comes off. Um, there's a few wires you need to unclip. Um, there's a, a wire that goes along here clips into here, clips into the edge of this, just remove that, and likewise at the top. Once you've removed them, you can uh, lay the whole unit down on the floor, 
and as you can see it's fairly simple just a few micro switches a very basic control panel and then the main wiring loom which travels along inside this plastic trunking which is sheared off on the sharp bottom edge of the door and then goes into the body of the machine here um, and if we inspect it carefully we can see that yep yeah, there's one wire completely uh, shorn in half and then that was short circuiting live to the frame of the machine um, and also another one that's almost cut in half there as well um, the others look okay for the time being so something will need to be done there to replace that um, and if I trace this uh, this cut wire back it goes all the way back um, and it looks like it's one of these ones here which is the main on off switch so the main power switch to the machine <laughs> is uh, cut in half not a very safe uh, not a very safe thing to be to have um, anyway so I'm now going to decide whether to uh, scrap the machine and buy a new one or to try and uh, fix this and reinforce the protection around there but anyway I hope this, vi this video has been useful and check out my channel for other useful hints and tips and fix guides thank you very much